Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Mark Gregory, along with Jim Sanders. Today we're going to discuss the proper tactics that you'd want to employ for a person that's impaled on a fence. Jim? Today we're going to discuss patients being impaled on fences. As you can see from our prop here, we have someone impaled on a, on a fence. There's certain things that we have to take into consideration before we even start touching a patient. First is PPE and proper protective equipment. Dealing with a patient of this statue, we always have to make sure that we have some sort of medical gloves or EMS gloves underneath our working gloves at all times. We must have our helmets, turnout gear, which includes our coat, bunker pants. The next thing we need to do is size up the situation. We have to determine how the individual basically got themselves impaled on this object. Could it have been an accident? Could it have been just a freak nature that the person was working and accidentally got himself impaled, which does occur at construction sites, and then we have to treat it accordingly. What we need to do is size up the situation insofar as let's determine how much of that fence is impaled on the patient. So we need some certain tools. A tool that's of major importance is a tape measure. Even though it's very inexpensive, we need to measure certain items. Let's, let's uh, take, for instance, the person is located in the rear yard of a, of a home. In order to gain access, we have to go through the interior of the home. There are doorways. So we need to measure the width of the doorways to make sure that it uh, can accept the stretcher, but it can also accept the patient on the stretcher as well. Our normal doorways are usually 30 to 32 inches in width. When it comes time to remove the patient from the impalement, we need to make sure that its profile is within the stretcher. After measuring the doorways that we know if we're able to get the stretcher in and out, if we make his profile within that stretcher, then we know we can you know, remove the patient safely. Other things we need to measure is the width of the ambulance doors in the open position. We must make sure that the patient is acceptable into the ambulance. Also note which side the patient is impaled on. If he's impaled on the left side, when we, pray, when we place the patient in the stretcher, we know that there's cabinetry work on that side. So normally we place our patient head first into the ambulance. We may have to reverse him. We may have to put him in feet first so that he's able to be transported to the hospital. Today, modern ambulances do have a space between the cabinetry work as well as the stretcher, so we may be able to get by with no injury or no, no uh, further injury to the patient at all. The next thing we need to measure are the pickets themselves. We first have to look at the pickets. Are they in the same pattern or are they scalped? And what we mean by scalp, do they go up and down? And if they do go in an up and down pattern, we have to figure out where he is positioned in that pattern. For today, we're using basically all the same pattern. So what we want to do is measure a picket that's remote from the patient and measure its height. So we have about 36 and a half inches in height. Then what we want to do is measure the picket that the patient is impaled on and measure the height. So we have 31 and a half inches. So we know that six inches are impaled in our patient. Is that good to know? Yes, it is, because when we do remove our patient and transport them to a trauma center, the physician usually wants to know how much is impaled on our patient. What's also a good thing to do is bring an exact sample of the impalement object with us to the hospital. Normally, the physicians want to look and feel the object itself. They want to feel the weight of it, what it's constructed of, if it's hollow or solid construction. But most of the time, they're concerned with the weight. The reason for that is when it comes time to extricate the rebarb that we're using here today out of the victim, he has to determine if it will take one person, two persons, or a team of individuals to remove the object from the patient itself. After we determine how much is impaled in the patient, then we need to, su we need to support his weight from below as well as above. In order to support his weight from below, we can use various things. We can use a little giant ladder. We could take spackle buckets. For today, we're going to use your typical EMS longboard. So what we're going to do is have two people, one on each side, place the longboard under our patient, thus supporting his weight. The reason why we want to do that is if we didn't support his weight from below, the patient can further get himself impaled on the object. That we don't want to do to cause any further injury to the person. Once the patient's weight has been stabilized from below, now what we need to do is stabilize the patient from above, so we need a high point. 
we can use various things. Today we're going to use an A-frame ladder as our high point. You can use two portable ladders, put them together and get an A-frame. You can use your apparatus as well, whether it's an aerial or a towel ladder or bucket. If you use your apparatus as a safety tip, once the ladder has been in its position, its final resting position, someone should go in, turn the apparatus off, and then turn the lights and siren on. If someone who is not designated to that apparatus goes in for whatever reason and turns the apparatus on, the lights and sirens will indicate that someone's in that apparatus that shouldn't be there, stop the operation and see what that person's going to do with the uh, app, uh, apparatus itself. So all we're going to do is here is we're just going to girth hitch him underneath his arms and then just tie it around the A-frame ladder to secure him from above. So basically our patient is secured from below as well as above, thus not causing any further impalement of the patient on the object. Once we repositioned our ladder or a high point, now it comes time to extricate our patient using a bandsaw. Our tool of choice is the bandsaw because for several reasons. It gives off hardly any sparks, any, if any sparks at all. No heat is generated, plus we get a nice smooth clean cut. When we position our bandsaw, what we want to do is place it against the fence. This way we don't get any kick or vibration from it at all. The person using the tool will attempt to make his cut, and when he does, he'll cut approximately three quarters way through the material. When he gets that, that's like a safety check. He will stop and make sure that everyone that's in position is ready to catch the load when the patient is extricated from the fence. Three quarters away to you guys, ready? So today we showed you how to remove somebody from an impoundment using a bandsaw. I'm Jim Sanders. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.